We are eternally grateful to a faithful God who's promised to never leave us nor forsake us, to be with us always in the mountaintops and in the valleys, in the desert place and in the streams where water flows. God's promise to be with us forever. God's promise to walk with us in these times of hardship, God's love guiding us, God's love protecting us and providing for his people. Hallelujah. The splendor of the King. God bless you, Victor Outreach Inglewood, and welcome to our Friday night church service. You are in for a treat tonight. Pastor Jerry has a word for us this evening. And so as you prepare to hear what God has to say to us, I just want to mention a few of the prayer requests that we've been praying for this week. We've prayed together here 
on Wednesday nights, we gather together, do a little worship, devotion, and then we just go into battle and we fight uh, for our loved ones and our friends. And so we've been lifting up um, some families. We, we want to pray for Bynum for safety uh, also for Angela Williams, we've been praying for her this week. Also for Angie uh, Meza, uh, for a healthy baby, a healthy delivery. And also the Perez family for comfort. They experienced a loss, and so we've been praying for them. And I want you to join with, uh, with me tonight as we pray uh, for these needs and whatever other needs that may exist out there. Uh, that you've been facing. We have been uh, also lifting up the Barfus family for the loss that they experienced just recently, a uh, tragic loss. And so we would just want to continue to lift up our family and friends this evening. So join me tonight as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, my God, your grace. You extend grace, my God, to those of us, my God, that seek you and tonight we come before you, Lord, and we just come with burdens and needs. We pray for these families, Father God, the Perez family for comfort, the Barfus family for comfort, Father God, that you would move, my God, in the miraculous to touch them, comfort them, surround them by your grace and your glory. We lift up Angie, Lord. Oh, God, as she's about to have her baby, Angie Mesa, we just lift up this family, Lord, to you and just ask for a safe delivery, Father God. We pray for Angie Williams. Williams, Lord God, that you would be with her, Father God, that you would touch her, bring healing to her physical body, Father God. We lift up Bynum, my God, that you would guide and direct him. We pray for his salvation, Father God. We pray for every other need, Father God, that exists within our congregation for our church. Lord, we just pray that you would move and do the miraculous, heal those that are sick, move in a miraculous way, Father. We thank you for your great ability your love and your grace for us. We thank you in Jesus' name, and we all say, amen. Well, I pray that you are blessed tonight with the service, and uh, just prepare yourselves as God has a word for you this evening. Amen. God bless. All right. Hello to all of you that are tuning in to tonight's uh, virtual service uh, to the Victor Outreach family here at Inglewood. Uh, we miss you as I'm sure you miss assembling in the house of God together, as I'm sure you miss the brothers and sisters here at Victor Outreach Inglewood. But you can be very sure of this, that our day is coming when we're going to be able to assemble once again on Friday nights and Sunday mornings. Like I said a while back, uh, it's just a season. and uh, Just like spring and, and summer and fall and winter has a beginning point, it also comes to an end. Uh, so this season will come to an end. Uh, but in the meantime, we welcome you uh, virtually here online. Uh, if you're not from the Victor Outreach family and perhaps you're, for whatever reason you're tuning in tonight, we also welcome you as well. Uh, I'm going to begin reading uh, two scriptures found in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. And as if you have a Bible, as you turn there, I just want to thank Pastor Kevin, once again, for entrusting me to preach this evening, allowing me uh, the, to preach, and then also the Lord Jesus Christ for saving uh, my life uh, many years ago uh, and his keeping power that's upon my life. He deserves all the glory and all the praise for my salvation and for the productive life that I happen to be living this evening. To him be all the glory and all of the honor. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. The Bible says here, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you tonight for your living word. It's active. It's full of truth. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, O oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, that it's, it's, it's full of life tonight. And I pray tonight that your words, God, would go deep into our, our lives, God, those that are tuning in, those that we uh, are more than welcome, my God, to uh, to tune in, to listen to your word. I pray that you would go deep, that you would minister right into their very heart tonight. 
The same way you've done me as I, as I prepare this message, I pray when all is said and done, that greater commitment would occur to a God that is so faithful, that greater loyalty would occur, my God, to a God that is so loyal to us and to uh, and, and, and a greater commitment overall in our walk with you. We love you this evening. We praise you. In Jesus' name we all say, amen. Now, I'm sure that all of us, as we take a moment to contemplate our lives, that we can begin or we can recall certain events or times within our lives where things were pressing, where needs were rising, where circumstances were overwhelming, where things were not looking too promising. As a matter of fact, we probably remember times when we were on the verge of some serious consequences. When all of a sudden, God came through for you. God showed up in a way that we least expected. Breakthrough. God's provision. God showed up on the scene and paved a way for you and I where there really seemed no way. I'm sure that all of us can recall stories of how the faithfulness of God showed up in a powerful way on our behalves. Now, if faithfulness is part of the character of God, and God has been showing up on behalf of his people for, for years, stemming back to the Bible era, the Bible era, leading up to how he has come through for you and I, time and time again here tonight, how many really believe with all of your heart that God is far from being done? That he still is a way maker. He still is a miracle worker. And he still is a promise keeper until this very day. He is a God of provision. That when he says that he shall supply all our needs according to his riches and glory, that he means it. He backs it up. His talk is real. It's not cheap. He means what he says. Now, in John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus says that in this world, we're going to have trouble. Another word for trouble is difficulty, problems. But right after that, in that same verse, he says, but to take heart because he has overcame the world. In other words, no worries. In other words, I got you. In other words, you know what? I'm out for your best interests. I have overcame all this in this world. And if I am for you, who can be against you in this world? So he says, take heart. An extended uh, definition of take heart means to be courageous. It also means that help will arrive shortly. I love that. It also means that everything will be fine. Time and time again, we see in the Bible how the odds were stacked up against God's people. And God would move all of a sudden. God would perform miracle all of a sudden. He would perform his miracle working power. When you think about the experience with the Red Sea, when the people of Israel were fleeing out of Egypt and they were making forward progress, all of a sudden they, they found themselves at the water's edge Seemed like their backs were against the wall, were really nowhere to turn, the enemy advancing, probably all kinds of things running through their mind, really didn't know which way to go, couldn't go forward because of this great ocean, this great sea that was in their way. And what happened? The Lord showed up and performed a miracle right before their very eyes. Breakthrough provided for them. When you think about David and Goliath, here we see a big old seven-foot uh, probably bigger than seven foot. The Bible describes him as bigger than seven, taller than seven foot. An army, an enemy of the army of the living God. The Bible says that he would come out day after day and defy the armies of the living God. Disrespect. Hold God's work in, a, in contempt. And matter of fact, the army was even shaking in their boots. Intimidated by the stature, by the armor, by his natural physical appearance. But all of a sudden, a young boy came onto the scene and said, Who is this 
uncircumcised Philistine, that he should come out day after day like this and defy the armies of the living God. And we know the story there. God used a rock or a, 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 a rock and a slingshot. And because of the miracle working power of God, he slung that thing and eventually killed that giant that was holding God's army and God's work in deep contempt. Miracle, provision, breakthrough. We see it there. How about Joseph? Sold into slavery by his brothers. The odds looked stacked up against him as he was there and uh, 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 their uh, motives and their intentions were to do him harm, to get rid of him, to knock him off the scene. But what happened? Everywhere he went, the Bible says the favor of God was upon him. God's anointing was there with him. And God gave him favor every step of the way, even through the Potiphar's house. Amen. We're talking about God showing up, paving a way where there seems no way. What about Job? We know what happened with Job. Lost everything he had. Stricken with, 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 with boils and skin disease. And, and, and lost his children. Lost his livestock. Odds were stacked up against him. He had every, in the natural, he had every uh, excuse to, 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 to turn away from God. Or to, you know, to, to look in a different direction. But as he stayed focused on God, God gave him breakthrough. In chapter 42, verse 10 of the book of Job, we see that ultimately he received double of what he lost. Breakthrough, showing up for him, providing for his children. Amen. The Apostle Paul, time and time again, shipwrecked, flogged, threatened not to preach, put in prison. And we know what happened when he started singing in prison and staying focused on God during odds that were stacked up against him in the natural. But what happened? God showed up, opened up those prison doors, set him free. Talking about the miracle working power of Jesus Christ, God's provision for his people, Jesus himself. All the bad intentions, the motives that were set up against him in the natural. But little did the Roman soldiers know and Pilate and, and, and even those people that were watching and voting against him uh, to be, to be uh, crucified. And all those people that were there, little did they know God had a different plan to perform miracle working power on that third day. In Luke chapter 1 verse 37, for nothing will be impossible with God, the Bible says. Tonight, perhaps, some odds are stacked up against you. It's been difficult. It's troubling. Times are uncertain. Things look a little foggy right now or blurry. And, or, or, or maybe you feel like you're being hard-pressed on every side. I got news for you. You're not crushed. Maybe you feel like you're abandoned or perplexed. But I got news for you. You're not abandoned. Amen. God wants to remind you tonight that he still rescues. God still delivers. He still sets people free. And he still is a God of breakthrough here for us here tonight. In Romans chapter 8, verse 32, the Bible says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him graciously give us all things? I remember I heard Pastor Kevin say one time, he's never seen a sucked up pigeon. And in light of that context, when he was saying that, that that day on that Sunday morning, what he was saying was, even God takes care of the pigeons. He provides for them. And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, the Bible says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than, they, than them? In the natural, we are living in times that are uncertain, that are lacking clarity, that may be a little scary for some. But how many of you know we're not called to operate in the natural? We're called to operate in the supernatural realm, the unseen, that place where the Spirit of God exists, that place where power exists. That place where miracles are put together on, on mine and your behalf. That place where breakthrough starts. 
I love that. I love the idea that, you know what, that, that, that realm exists, that when I speak to God or when I'm experiencing a dilemma or a troubling situation, that all I got to do is cry out to the Lord and he hears. He's able to come and aid and provide aid on our behalf. He's able to, to put together a miracle when we least expect it and make sure it comes to pass on our behalf. That's the kind of God we serve. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, For we walked by faith, not by sight. And if there's ever a time where we need to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not on our own understanding, that time is now. In Psalms chapter 18, verse 29 the Bible says, with God's help, we can advance against a troop. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8, the Bible says, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not uh, fail you or forsake you. So what does he say here? Do not fear or be discouraged. Beautiful. That should fill us with hope. That should fill our hope tanks up to the brim. That should fill us with a new sense of excitement, anticipation. As a matter of fact, that should, that should, that should uh, clear that blurriness I was talking about earlier, or that fog that's preventing us from being able to see clearly in the midst of today's circumstances and give us a new sharp focus on Jesus. Amen? Listen, we have nothing to worry about. God has your best interests at heart. He wants to give to us. He wants to be right on time for us. Because we are his children. And many of us have children. And the, 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 what we want for our children is the best. We want to provide for them. We want to help give them the desire of their heart. We want to be there for them. How much more our Heavenly Father here tonight? There's a few things that I want to just share with you as I uh, prepare to, to, to close in a few moments here. So the first thing I want to share with you tonight is like a little girl or a little boy looks up to their father. In most cases, you look up to your heavenly father. You continue looking up to your heavenly father. The Bible says to keep our minds on things above. And it's imperative that we know that he is our solution, that he is our answer, that he is the strong tower that we can run to and we are safe. That we keep our minds steadfast on our heavenly father because he cares for us. Number two, regardless of what it is, nothing can compare to the greatness of God. He says in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, if I am for you, who could be against you? Nothing stacked up against you, no amount of pressure, no amount of set of circumstances. It does not matter how they stack up and how, how odd seems so uh, against you. It doesn't compare to how God is for you. God is able and if you're home tonight and you're watching this video, turn to your neighbor there at your house and tell him God is able. Say it convincing with, that you're, say it in a way that you're convinced. God is able. Tell your child, tell your husband, tell your wife, tell whoever's there with you that God is able. Number three, make sure your mind is geared in the right direction. In Psalms, I believe King David says that, uh, uh, that he will keep in perfect peace. He who mine is stayed on thee. Amen. And all that is going on in today's world, if we're not careful, it's a, it's, we can become very susceptible or vulnerable to allowing our minds to, to listen and to entertain all kinds of stuff that produce uncertainty and a lack of clarity and, you know, uh, uh, blurriness and fogginess when the answer is right here in God's word. 
It's basic instructions before leaving earth. The, the, the information, answer, solution, promise. Help for d- d- practical situations are right here in God's word. First and foremost, keep your mind stayed on him. So we've got to make sure our mind is geared in the right direction. And if there's one time I believe that the enemy is really trying to lie to the church of Jesus Christ, the time is now. He's trying to capitalize on, on this, this pandemic and trying to use it in a way where he's lying to the body of Christ. And he's trying to put fear in them and, and, and uh, you know, uncertainty and doubt and, you know, and, and just, just to scare them to the point where th- there's, a, there's a paralyzed state. You know, but right now, but as we focus on God, as we remember how he's been there for us time and time again, things he's brought us out of, breakthrough he's given to us time and time again, the fact that he's far from being done, he has our best interests at heart, he's our heavenly father, he wants to give. He wants to show up on time. He wants to answer when you call in the heavenlies. He wants to respond on your behalf. All that should produce some excitement, some hope. A new sense of, man, uh, just a new sense of, of, of excitement for his honor and for his glory. Amen. A new sharp focus on him. Because what I'm telling you tonight is true. God is not done. God is not done. He's in the blessing business. He's in the providing business. And he loves his children to the point where he wants to see them succeed. He wants to break through. He wants to be the God of provision for them. So right where you're at, right there in your living room or wherever you're at viewing this this message, I want to pray for us tonight. I want to pray that God would just refresh our soul. That God would, 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 would not only refresh our soul, but God would also quicken our minds and help us maybe even just recall what he's done for us and how far he's brought us and help us realize that you know what he's far from being done with us and that because of that reality that it will spark a new sense of excitement in your soul a new sense of 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 commitment to him uh, uh, of faith and uh, hope and a new sharp focus on the lord almighty here tonight father we thank you tonight for your word, God, and Father God, in this natural aspect, God, that we live here on earth, these natural, God, uh, this, with the world that we live in, God, uh, this own understanding that we have to cope with on a daily basis. Father, it's easy with this pandemic, God, and all that is taking place, all this information that's coming at us and from different directions, it's easy to let our minds wander, God. It's easy to uh, allow ourselves to, to uh, be blurred in our focus on you. To see fuzzy, God, where, we, where, we, 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 where we, we don't see clearly, my God, all that you have done and all that you intend to do, God. Father, tonight I pray that you would refresh the, those that are tuning in, that you would give us fresh focus on you, God, God, that as we open up our word, that you would give us fresh promises that we could stand upon. And God, I pray that as we recall all that you've done for us, that it will spark revival. God, a new commitment level to you, God. Father, I trust in the Lord like never before. Not lean on our own understanding. Father, during this time, I pray that you would be our primary focus throughout this whole pandemic time, my God. In a way, God, that we uh, glorify your name despite whatever comes our way. Continue to defy odds. Continue to provide breakthrough. Continue, Lord God, to uh, be that God of provision in our individual lives. We give you all the glory and all the praise here tonight. In Jesus' name we say, amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you tonight that have tuned in. Um, uh, uh, Once again, I hope God ministered to you. I believe he did. Um, And uh, we're back here Sunday morning, uh, Pastor Kevin, at 10 a.m. And uh, hopefully we'll see you, if not here sometime soon, we'll see you in the future 
Maybe at a Starbucks or something. No, I'm just kidding. God bless you. Bye-bye.